Jeez. Did I black out in the parking lot at Denny's again last night? Oh. Oh! Take a warning from me, ladies. If a guy with a fedora and a cape tells you that he's nice, he's probably lying. Now I'm stuck in this guy's crypt and I don't know how to get out. I better escape before he wakes up. All right, so let's play some Castle Ravenloft. Um, I'm beginning with the very first solo adventure called Escape the Tomb. And this is designed for one player. I've chosen to play as Arjan, the dragonborn fighter, because he has a good set of skills for going in alone. Um, his armor class is 17, which is pretty high. His HP is 10. His speed is 5. And his surge value is also 5. So if I lose all of my HP and die, I can use one of my surge tokens to come back to 5 HP and try to keep on fighting. The premise of this particular scenario is that I have woken up in Strahd's crypt. He's this creepy vampire who kidnapped me last night. And now my goal is to get out of here before the sun sets. He wakes up and eats me or whatever nefarious thing he plans to do. So over here I have a sun timer. So every time I explore and draw a tile that has a white arrow on it, the sun is going to set just a little bit more. And if we hit five, when we hit five, Strahd is going to wake up and he's going to start trying to chase me down before I can get out alive. So here I am. I've woken up on this gross bone pile and now it is time for me to take my very first turn. Turns in this game are divided into three phases. And the first is the hero phase, which is where I get to do something. So normally my options are attack and move, move and then attack, or move twice. But since I just have this tiny tile, I'm just going to move right here, right to the edge. So now that I'm here on this edge of this tile, we're going to move on to the next phase, which is the exploration phase. So if you stop on the edge of a tile like this, where there's nowhere further you can go, you draw another tile and you place it so the arrow is facing the tile that you're just coming off of. So in this case, we have drawn a new hallway tile, and every time you draw a tile, this pile of bones is gonna spawn a monster. So let's draw our first monster and see what we got. So the first monster we've drawn is a rat swarm. So um, we will find their miniature and we'll put it on the board, and then we will operate the monster according to the instructions on this card. All right, so I have moved the rat swarm to the bone pile where it belongs. And uh, the last thing I need to do, because in my exploration, I turned up a tile with a white arrow, is I have to move my sun tracker. So the sun has gone down a little bit. The light outside is starting to fade. I can just sense it within this crypt. And I know that I need to escape because my life depends on it. So our next phase is actually the villain phase. Um, if I had not drawn a tile or if I'd drawn one with a black arrow, I would pull an encounter card and have an encounter, which is almost always something really bad, um, in addition to the monster that just spawned. But since that didn't happen, um, it's just this monster's turn to attack me. So according to the instructions of the Rat Swarm card, if the Rat Storm, what's Rat Swarm, is within one tile of a hero, so this is a tile, this is a tile, it's within one tile, um, it moves to the closest hero's tile and attacks each hero on that tile with a multitude of bites. So this rat swarm is gonna come up and it's gonna try to bite me. So it's gonna roll a die. My armor class is 17 and the rat swarm's attack bonus is plus seven. So if it rolls a 10 or better, I will be bitten by rats. Oh no, D20. Um, so it definitely hit me. I lose one HP. So I just had a look at the rule book and it didn't say if anything extra happens if a monster rolls a critical hit. So we're just gonna go with the damage. All right, so I totally got bit by rats. That was gross. Okay, so it is now my turn again, back on the hero turn. So this time, since my options are attack and move, move and attack or move and move, I definitely want to attack this nasty little rat swarm and pay it back for what it's done to me. So I'm gonna use this at will power so I have a series of powers that I can work with throughout the game. At will powers, I can use any time I attack. They don't wear out. I can just use them again and again. Um, but these are sort of one-time use in the sense that once you use them, you can't, you have to turn them over and you can't refresh the power until you get basically a treasure card that says you can. 
So if I want to use Dragon's Breath and attack every monster in my tile, I have to flip it and wait for something that tells me that I can refresh it before using it again. So it's only to be used when I definitely need it. So for now, we're gonna go with Tide of Iron. My attack modifier is a plus eight. The Rat Swarm armor class is a 12. So let's see how this roll goes. Okay, so I hit it for 12. And you know, with my modifier, I hit it for even more. So this Rat Swarm took one damage from me, which means that it is now dead. And then I get to take the Rat Swarm's card and keep it for the experience points at the bottom. So in this case, the Rat Swarm is worth one experience. And what that means is that when I get to five experience, I can either pay five experience to avoid drawing an encounter card because maybe I just really can't have anything bad happen to me right now. Or if I roll a natural 20, unlike the rats, ugh, I can actually um, spend five experience points to level my character up. So I'm gonna keep this for now and we'll see if it comes in handy later. So it's still my turn, I've attacked and I have the option to move. So I have, my move is five. That means I can move five squares there's really only four squares here. So let's just roll with it. Go to the end of the four squares, and that's my hero's phase. Now we're in the exploration phase, so let's see what we pull off of the dungeon tile deck. Okay, so now we've pulled a new tile, this one with a black arrow on it, so we do not have to advance the, sun the time track. We will have to draw an encounter card during the villain phase. I'm also gonna pull another monster. So let's see what we get. Okay, so this time we got a Kobold Skirmisher. So let's take a quick look at our new little friend here. Um, he has an armor class of 13, an HP of 1. And when he's within one tile of me, he throws a javelin at me for an attack with a plus 9 modifier. So let's see how he does. So I have put my Kobold Skirmisher on top of the bone pile. Now the exploration phase is over, and it's time for yet another villain phase. So because I drew a tile this time that has a black arrow on it, that means that before the kobold attacks me during um, his part of the villain phase, I'm going to draw an encounter card. So let's see what this encounter card says. I've drawn a secret door. And what it says is that, ooh, a section of stone wall slides away, revealing a hidden chamber. Draw a tile from the bottom of the dungeon tile stack and place it adjacent to the unexplored edge that is closest to the active hero. Place a new monster on that tile, but do not draw an encounter card. So what this means is I basically need to draw an extra tile and put down an extra monster before the monsters attack. So the way that we're gonna do this is, so when I set this game up, the bottom tile is the, the hidden stairwell that I need to use to win the game and escape. I feel like I would be cheating to um, pull the one off the bottom because that would just give me my exit. So what we're gonna do instead is just draw another one off the top. That seems reasonable. Okay, so we've drawn another one with a white arrow on it. And what that means is that our time track is gonna advance one. We're also going to draw another monster and see what we wind up with. So who do we get? Okay, so now we've drawn a zombie. Whew, okay, so now that this encounter has resolved, it is time for the next part of the villain turn, which is where the monsters attack. We're gonna start with the Kobold Skirmisher. So as it says in the card, if the Kobold is within one tile of a hero, it attacks the closest hero with a thrown javelin. So this Kobold is gonna throw a javelin at me, and he totally hit me, 18 plus whatever his modifier was. I am just getting in the way of things today. And now it's the zombie's turn. So if the zombie is within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks the hero with a rotting fist. But he's actually not within one tile of me because that would be this tile. He's within two. So otherwise, the zombie moves one tile toward the closest hero. So we'll just put him right here. So that resolves this villain phase and now we're on to the next turn. Okay, so it is my go again. And what I'm going to want to do is I can move and attack, attack and move, or move twice. So probably the smartest thing for me to do is just move right here and try to attack that kobold. Um, I'm just going to use... Hmm. Okay, here's actually what I would like to do. Since both of these monsters are on the same uh, tile, 
I want to use this power called Cleave. It's an at will power. Its modifier is a little bit lower, so I'm going to have to roll higher. But it says if you hit, choose another monster on your tile and move adjacent to it. That monster takes one damage. So actually, if I were smarter, I would have moved next to the zombie because he's easier to hit. And then I could have killed them both in one turn. So let's assume that I was actually that intelligent and just go right here since I could have been finishing my moves phase just now. So we're going to cleave. And we are going to have to beat an armor class of 11. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to, well, we're going to roll this tie. See how we go. Ooh, we hit at 11. So this zombie gets hit. And it dies, which is awesome. Goodbye, zombie. So I get his card for experience points. Fantastic. But because my cleave was successful, I can also choose another monster on my tile and move adjacent to it. This monster takes one damage. So since this Kobold Skirmisher only has one HP, it's also dead. And I also get to take its card, which is some consolation for the fact that I am not going to move far up enough to explore this turn, which is really disappointing because I will not get out of here if I do not explore enough to get to the bottom of the tile and draw the stairs. So as I mentioned before, I'm not on the edge of a tile. I can't pull an exploration tile this turn. So now we're gonna move straight into the villain phase. So if you don't draw a tile, when you get to the villain phase, you have to pull an encounter card. So let's see what encounter I get. So unfortunately, I've drawn something called the Spirit of Doom. The entire crypt shudders as though some gargantuan creature was moving deep below. Each hero can immediately move up to his or her speed. After this move, each hero on a tile with no monsters takes one damage. Well, that sucks because there aren't any monsters, so I'm just going to take one damage at the end of this encounter. Ah, c'est la vie. All right, so let's at least take my free move here. One, two, three, four. So we're on the edge of a tile, and that means that... Uh, we don't really have to do anything for the next hero phase. I'm just going to readjust my setup so that we can put some more tiles down. Oh, and I completely forgot to do something important. Every time you beat a monster, you actually draw a treasure card. So since we've defeated three monsters so far, let's pull three treasures and see what we get. One, two, three. So sadly, the other treasure cards that I drew were context dependent and no longer useful. But I did keep the third one. It's a Ring of Regeneration that allows me to um, add an HP to my count instead of drawing a treasure card when I would draw a treasure card. So that's useful, and we will definitely be rolling with that. All right, so let's explore. Let's pull another dungeon tile. Okay, so it has a black arrow on it, which is good in the sense that we will not be uh, that we will not be um, advancing the time track. It's bad in the sense that we will have to play another encounter card, and you know how much fun those are. But first, let's figure out what monster we're going to be having. Okay, so I just drew a ghoul. He's got a fairly high armor class and some nasty attacks, so hopefully this will go okay. Put him on the bone pile. We also need to draw an encounter. So let's see what we get. Ooh! You find an ancient chest with a rusty lock. You open a treasure chest. Roll a die. So if I roll 1 to 10, I take 2 damage. Ugh. If I roll an 11 to 15, I take 1 damage and then draw 1 treasure card. If I roll 16 to 20, I just get to draw a treasure card. So this encounter could turn out good or bad. Let's see what happens. D20. All right, so that's awesome. I get to pull a treasure and I do not have to take damage for doing so. So let's see what I get. Treasure. Ooh, a Holy Avenger. Play this item immediately. You gain a plus one bonus to attack rolls against adjacent monsters while this item is in play. Increase the bonus to plus three against undead monsters. Ooh, okay, so I will keep this. Doesn't say discarded at any time. So I'm going to have a plus three advantage against this ghoul, which happens to be undead. So that encounter actually worked out pretty well. All right, so now it's this ghoul's turn to take a shot at me. 
So if he's adjacent to me, which he's not, he would be coming at me with a bite, which could do some serious damage. He's just within one tile of me. So he's now gonna move adjacent to me and try to get me with his paralyzing claw, which I really hope that he doesn't because if he hits me, I'm immobilized and I lose another turn of movement and thus another turn of exploration, which would really stink. So let's see what happens. Okay, so this ghoul rolled a 12 with an attack modifier of plus seven. So he absolutely did hit me. So sadly, I am immobilized for my hero turn, which I'm about to take. So since move is removed from the equation, I can attack him from where I am. So that is what I'm gonna do. And the good news is that at least I get a plus three from my, um, my Holy Avenger treasure that I just picked up. So he's got an armor class of 16. I'm gonna use Tide of Iron for a plus eight and then a plus three bonus against undead monsters. So that puts me at 11 already. So I need to roll a five or better in order to kill this ghoul. Okay, so we rolled a 16. That means that this ghoul is dead. And I will get to take his card for some experience. So this is great because that puts me at five experience. And now I can choose to draw a treasure card or because I have a ring of regeneration, I can choose to regain an HP token instead. So I'm at seven HP, which isn't terrible, but I wanna regain one anyway, because you just don't know what can happen. So I'll put me back at eight. Um, I can't move, so I can't explore. And what that means is that even though no new monsters are gonna come up, I do have to draw an encounter card. So let's pull it. Ooh, an event attack, hands of the dead. Severed hands crawl from the earth and grab at you. Attack each hero on the active hero's tile. Ugh. Okay, so I'm taking one damage no matter what. So I need to calculate for this attack. Okay, so the hands rolled an eight plus six is 14. So it doesn't actually hit me, it misses me, but I still take one damage for a miss according to this card. So that is one more HP gone, bummer. But I mean, there are worse things. And now we are back on my turn um, because that was the villain phase and I am remobilized and able to move. So let's go one, two, three. Let's twist over this way and see what we get. Draw a tile. Okay. These tiles all fit pretty nicely together, by the way, which is neat. All right. So in my exploration phase, I drew one with a black arrow. This does not advance, but I will have to draw another encounter card in a second. 